One of the things we do uh, a lot, though, is for each specific disease-modifying treatment, there is now a what I call de-risking strategy. It's drug-specific. There are things you do at baseline to make sure they're safe. Um, when you use the therapies, some of them cause cell lysis syndrome, for example, oculizumab and alemtuzumab uh, uh, lyse their cells, that's how they work, complement-mediated lysis, and that causes infusion reactions, and we treat those. Uh, and then long-term, depending on which drug you're on, you get different complications, and so there is a pharmacovigilance, a monitoring uh, requirement for each therapy, and you have to know each drug to, to do this. But I think it's important to tell individuals uh, who have got MS when they want to go onto one of these treatments that there are things we can do at baseline during therapy and after therapy to try and reduce the risks associated with these treatments. There are different strategies now. So depending where you go, you're going to get treated differently. Some people like a slow escalation. Some people like to do rapid escalation. Uh, and some people like to flip the pyramid. In other words, use the most effective treatments first line, for example. Uh, which strategy uh, gets offered to an individual depends on several factors. The treatment philosophy of the treating clinician, uh, uh, how much risk the individual wants to take on, uh, and obviously um, the kind of treatment response or monitoring they w require. So there's no right or wrongs in terms of how this disease is treated. Um, uh, I think it just needs to be treated uh, actively. I'm a, a proponent of treat early, treat effectively, and do it rapidly because uh, this disease does cause damage and the more time you left with active disease, the more damage you accumulate. So it's important to get on top of this disease as soon as possible. Um, another strategy that has emerged in the MS space is treating the disease to target. So uh, in the past we were just happy it's suppressing relapse rates. Uh, I think we now realize that's uh, inadequate we should try and make people free of activity and go beyond that. And so we're now beginning to treat to target, and a lot of us are going beyond just making people relapse or MRI activity free. A lot of us are actually wanting to normalize the accelerated brain volume loss that occurs in MS. In other words, protect the end organ uh, and normalize that if we can. Uh, and when you actually look at all these disease-modifying treatments, the only therapies that really do that are the high-efficacy drugs. Uh, and so there is beginning to be a switch from low efficacy to high efficacy, and more and more of the MS population now are ending, ending up on, uh, on high efficacy therapies, simply because our treatment targets becoming more uh, ambitious and more aggressive. When it comes to symptomatic treatments, uh, they're a large number, and I'm not going to go through each one, just to say to you that if you develop enough damage, you're going to develop problems in almost all of the systems. Uh, and so the symptomatic treatments is optimizing bladder and bowel function, sexual dysfunction, fatigue, preventing falls and fractures, looking after spasticity, pain, sleep problems, depression, anxiety. All of these are the consequences uh, of multiple sclerosis damaging the central nervous system. So to manage people uh, in an MS service, you have to have strategies for dealing with you know, all the symptomatic problems. And uh, um, I've drawn a London tube map to try and illustrate uh, this to people with a disease. It's, um, um, uh, there's a main line that goes from being at risk through the asymptomatic uh, to the symptomatic phase of the disease and then going from mild to moderate to severe impairment and you go to the terminal phase of the disease. Uh, people don't like the terminal phase, but people do die as a consequence of MS. So the most common cause of death is usually related to infectious complications from bladder or aspiration pneumonia. And uh, there are issues around the terminal phase of the disease that need to be addressed. Um, one of the lines I've put in place is the symptomatic line, and this just deals with all the symptomatic problems um, people with multiple sclerosis uh, complain about. I think creating uh, the so-called tube map of MS at least gives you a, a visualization, a structure to, to, to uh, understand all the aspects of this disease.